Welcome back, my beautiful friends. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. I'm your host, Zen Sams. Today, in one of our newest segments brought to us by Animoca Brands called Hello Open Metaverse, we are featuring the awesome Mohamed Ezeldin. Now, Mohamed heads up the tokenomics team at Animoca Brands, and Animoca is a leader in digital entertainment, blockchain, and gamification, and they're working to advance digital property rights and contribute to the establishment of the open metaverse. Mo leads a global team that has driven dozens of projects for Animoca. He and his team's unique skill sets are driving decentralization through tokenomics and building a sustainable token economy. Today, we're chatting about what does a head of tokenomics do, how to make Make a game sustainable and how Animoca is shifting their approach to find the balance in gaming and game five. Now, the evolving Web3 build-out is moving forward viciously, funded by billions of venture dollars. Web3 has potential applications across multiple industries and is attempting to solve ownership issues surrounding privacy, self-sovereignty, and economics within the internet. Now, by leveraging tokens, cryptography, and decentralized technology, Web3 will eventually disrupt the centralized, intermediary, monopolistic business structures. Now, fundamental tenant of the Web 3.0 ecosystem is sharing ownership via tokens and tokenomics with users for adding value. Now, tokens are transformative features in the Web 3 business models. They represent programmable assets on the blockchain that grant owners ownership, incentives, and participation in the growth and governance of Web 3.0 platforms. And here to chat some more is my expert at hand, Mo Ezeldin. Welcome to the show, superstar. Woo, good to be here. Thank you for having me on. <laughs> Thank you for coming on. Mo, uh, you're a mathematician by training, and your passion is building tomorrow's economies through tokenization. How did you go from teaching to tokenomics, and what exactly does a head of tokenomics do? Oh, there's a lot to unpack in there. So, yeah, <laughs> as, as you mentioned, I, I was a, a high school teacher, a maths high school teacher in, in a previous life for, for 10 years. And funnily enough, that's what leveled me up and gave me a lot of the skill sets necessary alongside my, my mathematics background. I guess what, what does a head of tokenomics do? Very good question. It, it's an ever-evolving role as we're in an ever-evolving space. A lot of my focus is on, as, as you alluded to, designing sustainable economies. But what does that actually mean? Like, what, what is tokenomics? Uh, probably a good place to start. Super high level, it's the monetary policy or the fiscal policy within an, an ecosystem that's tokenized. Now, that's high-level fluff, even though I've just given that, that definition, because a, a lot of these ecosystems, as of now, are just games, for example, or, or social products. And the beauty of tokenomics is we get to build alongside the community to be able to, and to reference some of the words you're using, to give ownership to people within, within an ecosystem over their assets, be it over their over their data, over in-game assets, over NFTs, over tokens, regardless of, of what that is. So it's it's designing what that looks like, case-specific from ecosystem to ecosystem or project to project. Yeah, that's a big shift from teaching. Uh, but I understand the underlying concept of, for you, things were all about mathematics and applying the mathematics to the bigger picture and what you're doing today for Animoca is exactly that, which I'll shift to Metaverse. So as, as we all know it on our platform, people love the show because of edutainment. So Metaverse, guys, of course, I'm going to reiterate this, a 3D immersive internet is revolutionizing and disrupting so many industries across the board, entertainment, social media, e-commerce, uh, games, esports, private digital spaces virtual real estate, education, healthcare, medicine, manufacturing, I could go on and on, but you guys get the picture. Now, in gaming, though, established Web2 players such as Meta, Unity, Roblox, um, Epic Games, Microsoft, and, and many others are rushing to stake their metaverse claims. But Animoca, Mo, is, is already there. And speaking to the mass game developers who are not and still stuck in that Web2 to portal. Uh, they're creating what we've come to see are these walled gardens with each walled metaverse having its, its proprietary privileges, avatars, features, and currency, and digital products purchased within each web two walled metaverse are not transportable and constrained to their platform of origin. How does web three, web 3.0, uh, solve the interoperability issue? And how do you 
crack the code and how did you crack the code at Animoca? I think a lot of it is in the power of the tooling. So within Web2 ecosystems, for example, if I have a, a skin in Fortnite, I'm constrained to that ecosystem. I can't I can't take it out. It's it's stuck. But leveraging blockchain technology, and especially in the last couple of years with, with NFTs or non-fungible tokens, they, they allow us to then take out who we are or any assets we own from one ecosystem and be representative in other ecosystems um, without having to... I guess without having, without having to be stuck, having the freedom of choice, yeah. having the freedom right. to, to be able to move from, from one to another. Obviously, we're, we're still quite early on with the technology. So it's now building bridges between each of these different chains that are hosting these tokens and, and NFTs. So they're able to communicate and we can have a higher level of interoperability. Yeah, that's it's all about interoperability and, of course, in, incorporating blockchain, blockchain technology. That all matters. Uh, now, Web3 is going to allow participants to tangibly own the Web3 assets held in custodial wallets in the form of non-fungible tokens or fungible tokens, right? Hence, enabling users to move purchased or created digital objects and content across different platforms, like you just said. Now, Web3 companies such as Decentraland, Sandbox, Land Vault, Gala Games, Star Atlas, Axie Infinity, those staples, um, there's, a, there's a lot of innovation there. What innovative products is Animoca developing for the burgeoning metaverse in, in response to where we're all headed? Where do I start? So I, I guess fundamentally, we believe in the open metaverse, so it's not necessarily one product that, that, that we believe in. We believe in a multitude of products and how we can interact within one platform to another one. Some of the titles that we're super bullish on in terms of gaming, so we have a AAA game. One of the first AAA blockchain games is Phantom Galaxies. So we've innovated there where it's, it's an MMO style game where you you own land but what's super interesting within the planets in this instance is the planets actually emit the tokens based on gameplay so in pre-existing um token economies it's for doing basic actions you just earn tokens and then it's not sustainable because there isn't enough buy pressure on those tokens just people they play they earn and they sell but fundamentally when we come to playing games it's it's never about the earning it's only that top one or two percent who earn in, in gaming but realistically, the majority of us play for fun. So it's introducing the fun element back into gaming because that's the core reason why we game to begin with. And then leveraging what we can from a technological point of view to enable ownership and to enable transfer of assets between people or an open marketplace for people to, to interact. Another game where, or I guess another metaverse, Sandbox, as, as you've mentioned. So Sandbox has been a big hit, but we're only just starting to see the power of Sandbox. I think we're on season four now, I want to say. So season three, season four. So it, it's about growing alongside the community, whereas in pre-existing Web2 games, it's we build in silence for three or four years and then we release, whereas now it's building alongside our community and, and taking their input into account because fundamentally you want the community members or end users from a Web2 perspective to be spending their time within your game ecosystem or within your right. metaverse. Building communities, is, it's all about that. And it's gonna actually take me to the next question because the GameFi trilemma, Mo, uh, is made up of three components as you know it. Playability, profitability, and accessibility. And the problem arises from the fact that you can only have two components at any given time. And Web2, Web2 games give up profitability for players. Most Web3 games have given up accessibility by charging a hefty price for NFTs, which are required to earn um, the, the in-game play to earn rewards or required MetaMask to access the game. And others have given up playability to chase after the hot money by porting Web2 games without considering the, the suitability of the token model and or even revamping the game economy. So what is the solution and how is Animoca shifting their approach in gaming and GameFi and finding that balance? Absolutely right in everything you've said. I think that the main two solutions is number one is understanding why gamers come in into a game ecosystem. It, it's for the fun element. So it has to be around the playability first. And then as players come in, bearing in mind that the majority of players that as an untapped market within Web3 is your Web2 gamers. So it's making sure that we're abstracting all of the blockchain, all of the profitability, so to speak, in the back end. We don't want gamers to come for that. 
yet. We want them to come for the main gameplay, the value proposition of that ecosystem that they're entering. And then once they're in, discover the power of blockchain and discover the power of Web3. So it's more we talk about product roadmaps, but we also need to talk about roadmaps to decentralization. And that's converting Web2 players into Web3 players via initially coming off for the gameplay aspect. And then we transition alongside. So it's not the case of which three are we solving at the same time, because we can't. It's which two are we solving and optimizing. And then what are the next, what's the next combination and moving it through through a timeline. It's interesting because it all comes down to math. It comes down to patterns. It comes down to math. You see this. You see it from the inside because you're, you're behind the scenes developing this for the world, for, for fun, for entertainment, for escapism. But, but the calculations in the way that you are building and the tokenization of it all are so, so precise that it, it's interesting to see it play out. And I have interviewed so many of the top uh, companies that the subsidiaries that Animoca has within within in uh and everybody has their own brilliancy i have to say you're all brilliant yeah I, i'm lucky to work in the position that i have and over, alongside some of my colleagues i think what's super interesting is we're still very early in the space a lot of the tooling is quite early so mistakes will naturally be made it's just making sure that that we learn and with that said it's being dynamic so a lot of the subsidiaries i know you've, you've spoken with bajena from from gamey and, and, and benjamin yes. from, from their wise two amazing platforms opposite end of the gaming spectrum so we've worked with with um gamey um, and bajena with rk it's more hyper casual yet yeah, with darewise the life beyond game is more a triple a metaverse experience um mmo experience which which is super amazing and th the idea is game players don't fall under one personality or one persona we have multiple different personas so it's which game players we want to enter which ecosystem and then how can they benefit from being within that ecosystem and within that as well? How can the game yeah, benefit? And how can we move all of these different gamers from one ecosystem into another ecosystem? Not because of any and continue, and value. continue the community and continue. Because yes. I think what's, what's also important to understand is that the, the trilemma components share a correlation with one another. For example, a game studio or, or project team could be generating revenue from the sale of NFTs, so profitability, which derives their value from the inherent utility in the game, which means these NFTs must provide the owners an edge in the game. And as a result, this deters the free-to-play gamers from trying to game, which is accessible and dampens non-pay-to-win players' gaming experience, which is playability. So it's this like big, big circle that that now you have been able to break that pattern and shift them into a different um, interper interoperability, back into a different ecosystem that now they can be part of that ownership and have a say so. So I think it's phenomenal. Uh, absolutely. I mean, it's it, it's ongoing. It's it's ongoing. We have to be dynamic. We also have to innovate at the same time, as well as reflect on on what the market has told us and what we've learned from from other projects. Yeah, I, I think it's it's an amazing space. And what's even more exciting is some of the things we're working on now will have some some new in, or what we're hoping will become industry standards moving forward, so we can enter into a more sustainable ecosystem where where a lot of projects have failed has been due to short term. Um, they're, they're after short-term gains, where it's, let's sell an NFT, let's get a hyped community. But you spoke about NFTs having utility. For a lot of these games, especially, especially the AA, AAA games, it takes time to build. So it's great that some of these game studios, not necessarily within our ecosystem, but in general, in the yes. bull market, had raised millions and millions of pounds. And then it was like, all right, excellent. We have a community. We, we, we have an NFT. Let's build the game. And then let's just discovering the how difficult it is to actually build a game that people want to play. Yeah, absolutely. And we're out of time, but I wanted to say thank you so much for coming on. It was a pleasure chatting with you. You you are great at what you do. Animoca is amazing. One of my favorite uh, companies out there. Uh, great, great, solid company. And I thank you for coming on and sharing your knowledge with us. Thank you for having me on. It's been amazing. Thank you. Guys, that was Mo Ezeldin, head of tokenomics at Animoca Brands. You have to understand that Web3 is evolving towards a much more immersive and valuable internet for everyone involved. Venture funds have invested $33 billion in Web3 projects in 2021, and they're on pace to nearly double that this year alone. Many predict that the broader Web3 sector will become a multi-trillion, multi-trillion dollar industry over the next decade, going from just a buzzword to mainstream, 
but to really disrupting existing businesses, also at the same time creating massive new markets and giving rise to the creator economy. It's all about data sovereignty for the original producer and the extreme need to disrupt technocracy. That was our Hello Open Metaverse segment by Animoca Brands, and that was the awesome Mohammed Ezeldin, Animoca's head of tokenomics. Head to animocabrands.com to get involved in all the action and fun. You're listening to A Moment of Zen right here on 710 WOR, the voice of New York iHeartRadio. We'll be right back after this. A Moment of Zen is brought to you by Animoca Brands as a worldwide industry leader in digital, entertainment, blockchain, gamifications, and digital property rights. Animoca Brands plays a key role in the future growth of the metaverse. Ranked by the Financial Times as a high-growth company, Animoca Brands creates a new asset class, GameFi economies, and a more equitable digital framework contributing to the building of the open metaverse. For more information and to become part of the excitement, go to AnimocaBrands.com. That's AnimocaBrands.com.